Welcome to Oregon Life. This is part one of a two-part series. I got to sit down with Yordana Zelensky and his mother and father, Kathy and John, and immediately their story reminded me of a story I heard long ago called The Starfish Girl. And in that story, there was a major storm near the ocean. And as the girl was walking along the beach after the storm, there were thousands and thousands of starfish stranded. The girl knew if they were out of the water too long, that they would perish. So she frantically started throwing them back into the ocean to save their lives. Suddenly a man appeared and said, what are you doing? It doesn't matter what you do. You're never going to be able to make a difference. There's too many. And the little girl picked up another starfish and she hurled it into the ocean. And she turned to the man and she said, it mattered to that one. 8,000 miles away, an 11-year-old boy, which is quite old to be adopted, was wondering if he'd ever have a family, ever know love. Well, Kathy and John made that happen. I think it's just mentally like you have to be prepared because you're going to want to slow down because the times like that you're trying to hit, you're going to have to sacrifice. So, But it's a gut race and cross country, if you want to be good at it, you have to be willing to like face your fears and stuff. And I mean, that's like any sport. You have to put in hard work in order to get rewarded. God, I mean, I try to do each rep like it's like my last rep. So I do 100%. And I mean, if you're coming out here and you're trying to get better, what's the point of not going all out? If you slack, you're just cheating on yourself. So that's just how I see it. John and I had always um, talked about adopting and pretty much put it on the back burner. Um, my dad lived with us and he had dementia and I worked as well. so. We kind of let that go, but one day we were driving in Stoughton and we went by a place where I used to get my hair done and they were having a going out of business sale. And I thought to myself, we should stop and say hello to them. So I had head surgery on my Achilles, didn't really feel like getting out in the snow. So I told John, let's just keep going. And we were almost to Oregon when I changed my mind for some reason and we went back to the shop and as we came in there were these three beautiful girls and I was talking to the person that owned the salon my friend acquaintance and I said who are these girls and she said we adopted them they're our daughters and right away I said John and I have always wanted to adopt and one of the girls came forward and said there's a boy that's been there a really long time and he could use a home so I said, really? I want to start the process to adopt him. So they gave me their information. I broke the news to John as we were driving home that I really need to find out more information about this. And that's pretty much how it started. Uh, when I was in Holota, like, like when I walked around the street a lot, I was living with my sister and my stepmom, and my sister, like, she wanted me to get educated and stuff, but, like, my stepmom, she was, like, she had HIV and stuff, so I, like, was watching over her because nobody was really watching over her. So, like, back then, like, I was probably, like, five or six. I don't really remember the specific age, but 
I was just going out and like trying to find whatever I could do like I was basically like the mail boy to like people so I can make money and I had to get a, some kind of job like even like helping taxi drivers like call out the place that they're gonna go to and stuff but that job was like hard to get so I had to find other jobs. When I was walking to my grandpa's house with my real mom and she was dropping me off and that was the last time that I saw my mom for a few years and my grandpa and my grandpa had lots of kids, I think like four or five. So I lived with I lived with them for a while and I had to act like I was older than my age because my dad was, he passed away when I was like one or two. So I never got to meet him. So once my dad passed away, I think that's when our family like fell apart. It took um, two years to process all the paperwork before we could actually get on a plane and head to Ethiopia. Um, it was a 24 hours in the air, maybe a time difference in there, so a little bit less. And when we arrived, we had a driver, so we looked for a sign for our name, and it was so different than any airport here, to say the least. So we met our driver, very nice um, gentleman who's now a close friend, and then they asked if we wanted to go to church. Um, the orphanage Jordi was at was a Christian orphanage, so of course we said yes. And we traveled probably over an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We arrived at the church and the service was longer than here, so it was around two and a half, maybe three hours. We did not have time to meet Jordi that day because it was late. The next morning, our driver, Dave, that drove us to the orphanage, was going to take us to meet Jordanus. We did not know how far away it was from the guest house, but it was about an hour and 15 minutes where he lived um, in the countryside. We got there and all the kids were lined up against the building, the orphanage, and we spotted Jordanus. Um, we got out of the car. John. No, came first. I did, but on the right over there, which you might want to delete, but all I could think was, I hope Jordan loves us, and I, th I thought, I hope he doesn't mind that his dad is big and fat and bald. And I just, <laughs> I swear that's all I thought. But when we came in, we oh saw the kids goodness. lined up. There was Jordanus, and he came running and gave me a big hug and said, Dad. Yeah, one of the few words he yep, knew. Dad. Yeah. Which went dad and oh yeah, I melted. And yeah. he saw mom, he just had the biggest smile on his face. We were so happy. Yeah, there were quite a few kids out there and you can only think what they're thinking yeah. because he knows he may be leaving, which he's excited about, but he has told us that it's always hard when someone leaves because you wonder why they didn't get you know, why they didn't get picked and someone else did. Right. And it wasn't assured. No. that he was coming with us. Yeah, we had, you still have to pass court and for any reason they can decide that they don't want this adoption to go through. So we did not know even when visiting him and he did not know if it would be approved or not. Uh, when I was at the orphanage, like, I was there the longest from like all of the kids that have gotten adopted before me. And it was really stressful because I was like, I was seeing all of my friends get adopted and I was just asking myself like, why am I not getting adopted? Like, was I ever going to get adopted? And like back then, like we prayed a lot and stuff. Like that was like one of the things that definitely helped me. And I mean, I prayed every night to like, hopefully like get a family that's gonna take me in and give me a house to live at. I even asked like the, her name is Pochi, like that's a like leader. And I asked her like, am I ever going to get adopted? And she just says like, 
only God knows and like sh and that just like made me really sad and stuff and I was like most of the time just crying and stuff because of that because it's like deep down it feels like you're not wanted by anybody and that was like a very hard thing to like deal with but I just prayed every day and after that like I guess God heard me then he gave me a family. Like love, I didn't really like know what it meant besides like like giving somebody a hug. That's that was the definition that I knew of love. But I knew there was like depth. There was like way more meaning to that than just giving somebody a hug. And but love, I think like for me now it just means like having a family and like just being able to like even open up to my family and like being comfortable enough to like say what I need to say without like hesitating and like feeling like I'm gonna be judged and they're not gonna like comfort me in and like tell me like a good advice to like follow it upon and like now like there's like family love and there's obviously like girlfriend or like other love but like Definitely like family love is like something that you can't like really replace with anything because like that's your family that like gave you everything that showed you everything and even though I only known my parents for seven years like there's like zero things I could change about them because like they have shown me that they're trying to make me a better person and they're trying to have me be successful in life and hopefully do the same thing as they did like help out somebody when I'm older, maybe even adopt a kid.